Hey devs, and welcome back to week nine of our Android development course for beginners. This week, we're gonna be working on building adaptive UI. That is, we're gonna be working on building UI that adapts to different types of screen sizes and different uh, logical UI states within our application. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at adding a loading indicator when we are fetching our forecast data from the network. We're gonna add an empty state so that when users install our app for the first time, they aren't presented with a simple blank screen. And then finally, we'll show you how to uh, adapt your UI to larger screen devices like tablets so that you can take advantage of more screen real estate and make a better experience for your users across all form factors. Okay, let's jump into our week nine lecture on adaptive UI. So as usual, we will look for our project demo, give you a sense of what we will be building this week, what updates we'll be making to our weather app. And then we will talk about sort of two different components to adaptive UI. We'll talk about uh, building UI for different logical states within your app and talk about building UI for different device form factors. So what are we building this week? Well, we'll be adding an empty state to our current forecast fragment and weekly forecast fragment. We'll be adding a loading state to both of those fragments as well. And then we will be adding a tablet specific layout for our current forecast fragment to take better advantage of the increased screen size on a tablet. So here we have a look at both a Pixel C emulator and a Pixel 3 XL emulator. So we can see on the uh, Pixel C emulator here that we have a, a much larger text and it's centered in the screen on the tablet as opposed to on the phone, we have smaller text and it's in the upper left-hand side of the screen. So this is something we're gonna walk through and we'll leverage custom resource qualifiers to provide different layouts for the large screen device and the smaller screen device. If we switch over to our weekly tab, We'll see briefly there that we had this uh, empty message and a loading message indicating that there was some background work going. So that's the other piece to this. We're going to be adding those empty states and those loading states to both our current forecast fragment and our weekly forecast fragment as well. This improves the first time user experience and just makes our screen more responsive as users are walking through the app. So let's introduce the idea of adaptive UI. Um, the concept of adaptive UI probably means different things to different people. For me, I think of it kind of in two, two ways, two concepts. Uh, the first is building UI for different logical states within your app. Now, what do I mean when I say different logical states? So I mean things like this. Are you handling an empty state? What happens when your app doesn't have the data it needs? Do you have a loading state? What happens when data is being loaded? Is there any type of indicator to the user about what's happening? Now, what do you show on the successful state? What do you want to be showing on the screen? And what happens uh, if there's an error? How is that error surfaced to your users? Do they, do they see it? Do they get some type of hint as to how to recover from that error? These are the types of logical states um, that I think that we really should account for as app developers. The more of these states we can account for, the, the more responsive our app will be, the fewer sort of unaccounted for states the user can end up in, which means they will have a better user experience. And it means that they might be able to recover from errors more easily, which usually keeps users happier with your application, more engaged, and makes the app more useful for them. So it's very important that we handle this. So this is why we're gonna be looking at adding in an empty state so that when the user installs our app for the first time, we don't just have these blank fragments and no hint as to what the user should do. And that's why we're gonna add a loading state so that when we make the calls to load the current forecast and learn, load the weekly forecast, that there's some type of indicator that something is happening in the background. And now the other part of adaptive UI that uh, I consider is building UI for different form factors. And on Android, this is really important. How, you know, how, how does your app look 
on a, on a small phone or on a large tablet? You know, could you customize your UI to take better advantage of specific form factors? You might design a specific screen differently if you're thinking about a three inch phone versus a 10 inch tablet. And these are important questions to ask yourself as you're designing your app. You know, different form factors that we can account for are screen sizes. You know, like I said, uh, are you using a small phone, um, a medium sized phone, a large phone? Are you using a tablet? Um, we can account for screen orientation. Are you in portrait mode? Is your user in landscape mode? Are they switching back and forth between the two regularly? Are you on a device that might have multiple windows and do you support multiple windows? Is the user using a foldable device? So maybe they have one screen when it's folded and when they open it up, there's maybe one larger screen or two separate screens. Um, and, and the screen could be resizable. On, on Chromebooks in particular, users can resize the screen or the resize uh, your Android app, your activity, so that it might be a whole bunch of different sizes all within one single uh, process of your app running. So the more of these different configurations we can account for, the more dynamic our UI can be and the better experience we'll have across a wider variety of form factors. And now the way that a lot of this works is with resource qualifiers. We can use resource qualifiers to provide alternative resources for specific device configurations. These configurations end up taking the place of, or these configurations take the form of different resource directories with these special qualifiers added to the end. So for example, we have our layout directory within the, the res directory. This is where we've been putting all of our layouts in this course. However, if we wanted to add a layout specifically for a large screen device, we could add a layout-sw600dp resource. This resource directory would say any layouts in this directory will only be used for devices whose smallest width is at least 600 dp. So this is a good way to provide different resources for tablets. Similarly, you could create a layout-land resource directory, and this would be layout specifically for landscape orientation. And this applies to different types of resources as well. You could provide different dimensions for a large screen device using dimens-sw600dp. Um, and it's not just things like a small screen width or orientation. Um, you could also create different values if you wanted for, let's say, night mode versus a regular standard daytime mode. And there's a lot of different qualifiers there. And all of those can be leveraged to make your apps uh, more adaptive for more Android users. So let's end the lecture here. We'll jump over to the demo and we'll walk through how to start making our simple weather app a little bit more adaptive for our users and for different form factors. Okay, so here we are back in Android Studio. And the first thing that we're going to look at is adding an empty state to our current forecast fragment. Now to demonstrate why this is useful, the first thing I'm going to want to actually do is go to my emulator and I'm going to want to uninstall my app because we want to examine what our app looks like during the first time user experience. So once I've uninstalled the app, I'm going to go back to Android Studio. I'm going to then reinstall the app to my emulator. And now back here on the emulator, we can see why a empty state for our screen would be helpful. When we first open the app, before we've loaded any type of weather data, we just see this blank screen here. And we see it on both the Today tab and on the Week tab. Now these blank screens aren't helpful. We don't know if there's no data available. We don't know if there's some type of error. We're not sure where we're supposed to go next. So this is what we're going to fix. Instead of adding a blank screen, we're going to add a message there that says something along the lines of, please enter a zip code to see the current forecast. So let's jump back over to Android Studio. And now we're going to open up current forecast fragment. Now within current forecast fragment, we can see in our on create view, 
that we currently have three views that we're getting a hold of here. We have our kind of root level view, then we have the, the location name and the temperature text. So location name and temperature text represent the two views that we display once we have data. So really what we want to do here to add an empty state is add another view to this layout. We'll get a reference to it in the same way we're referencing location name and temp text. And then during different points of our data loading and display lifecycle within the fragment, we can set that view to visible or gone depending on whether or not we have data. So let's open up into current forecast fragment. And so now we're in fragment current forecast.xml. And if we go over to the design view here, we can see what our fragment looks like when we have data. So now let's add our new empty view text by grabbing a text view from the palette and dragging that over into our constraint layout. Now I want this to be displayed roughly in the center of the screen. So I'm going to start by constraining this to the end of the parent, to the start of the parent, to the top of the parent, and then to the bottom of the parent. So once that has been constrained to the parent, it should sit right in the middle. Now I'm going to go over to my attributes panel on the right hand side of the screen. And I'm going to actually adjust the vertical bias a little bit by dragging this slider. And you'll see as I adjust this slider, it moves that view up or down. Now I'm going to adjust it up until it sits at about 33%. So this will make it so that that text view there sits at about the upper third of the screen. That's just a, a nice way of balancing the screen out. People tend to read from the, the top down. So having that message a little bit further to the top will catch the user's attention a little bit more quickly and help the screen feel balanced since we already have a button towards the bottom of the screen. So now the next thing I want to do here is adjust the default visibility of this text view. Now by default, we want this view to be visible until we have data. So what I want to do is actually, again, come to the attributes pane here. And by default, I'm going to go ahead and explicitly set this to visible. And then for the tools visibility, I'm going to go ahead and just leave that blank for now, since by default, this is going to be visible. Now, by default, we don't want the uh, location name or the temperature text to be visible. We want to only make those visible if and when we load data. So I'm going to click on my location name text view here, the one that says Seattle, and then also come over here to the attributes pane. And now for this one, visibility, instead of it defaulting to uh, visible, I'm going to mark this as gone, but I'm going to set the tool visibility to visible. So this will make it so I can still see it here in our design view, but it won't be visible in the layout until we actually explicitly mark it to visible at runtime. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the temperature text. So I'll make it default to gone, but I will set the tool visibility to visible so we can see it here on this screen. So if we were to then just quickly run the app, let's take a peek at what this is looking like right now. So I will deploy that to my app. And then I will switch over to the emulator. And so now we see that by default, we're still not seeing the, um, the temperature text and the date. That's perfect. And then we are seeing now by default our, our empty message. Now, right now it just says text view. We're going to update that in a second, but this is a good start. So we're now actually seeing something on this screen when we load it. So let's go back over to Android Studio now. And we're going to update this text message. So down here in the uh, common attributes pane where it says text, I'm going to update this to say something along the lines of enter zip code to see current weather. Perfect. So now we've got this nice message here. Now there's a couple things that we might want to do here just to uh, make sure this looks good across all devices. 
And to demonstrate this, let's first see what it looks like on our primary device. So again, I will run this on my emulator. And we'll see here on this emulator, it looks perfectly fine. It's nice and centered um, and it looks, it looks pretty okay. Now, if I were to come back over to Android Studio, and let's say we want to update this text appearance to be something larger. Let's say we want this to look something more like a display two or a display three or something maybe a little bit more reasonable. Let's say display one, which is still quite a bit bigger. We'll start to see kind of an issue here. By default, this text is left justified and um, it's also not centered uh, in the screen at all. So what this means is that on smaller devices, this text is going to be pushed over to the left-hand side of the screen like this, and there's going to be no margin or anything. Um, and this typically isn't what we want when we think of a uh, nice looking uh, design. So what we want to do here is start off by adding some margin to the left and right-hand side, or, or really the start and end of this new text view. So I'm going to select the text view, come to the layout pane on the right hand side of the screen, and then I'm going to select the, the drop down here in the layout panel. And I'm going to select the left drop down, and I'm going to select a 16, and you'll see that it automatically pushes that over from the left side of the screen by 16 dp. And then if I were to actually do a little bit more, let's say 32, you'll see it pushes it over even more. Now I'm going to leave it at 32 and then I'm going to select the right one and also select 32. And we'll see that all that's done is now push it back over. Now, this is a, a subtle thing to watch out for when you're looking or when you're working with uh, text views and constraint layout. Constraint layout will only honor margin if you set your width to zero DP. So you see, as soon as I've changed the width of my text view to be zero DP, now all of a sudden I'm seeing the 32 DP margin on either side. By setting zero DP, we're indicating to constraint layout that we want the constraint layout to honor all the constraints. So in this case, we want it to honor being attached to the left and right of the parent, but then also honor the other properties like margin. So that's something to, to look out for. If you're working with constraint layout and trying to center some text, um, or you're trying to wonder why things aren't aligning quite right, double check whether or not you're using a uh, wrap content, or maybe you should be using zero DP to let the constraint layout do its thing. So here we now see that this text is um, kind of nicely centered in, in the middle a little bit. We have margin on each side. However, the text is still left justified. So to, to center that text and make it center justified, we can again select our text view, Come down here to the All Attributes dropdown, and we're going to scroll all the way down towards the bottom, and we're going to be looking for Text Alignment. If I select the dropdown here, I can select Center, and we'll see now it aligns that text nicely in the center of the screen. So now if I run this again, and I'll switch over to my emulator, we'll see that we have a nice looking empty state here. So now the next thing that we need to do is actually adjust the visibility of this empty state based on whether or not we have data. So again, back in our design view, let's click on this and let's give this a meaningful ID. So I'm going to select the ID property in the attributes panel, and I'm going to name this message or excuse me, I'm going to name this empty text. So now I'll come to current forecast fragment. Now in my on create view, right below the line where I get a reference to the temperature text, I'm going to create a variable for the empty text. So I'll type val empty text equals view dot find view by ID. It's going to be of a type text view. And I'm going to pass in r.id.emptyText as my ID. So now, where are we actually updating the visibility and the, the properties of these text elements? 
Well, that is in our current weather observer. So right here for me, I see that when I get an updated current weather object, I'm updating the location name text and the temperature text. So what I want to do now is when we get a new weather object, we want to say empty text dot visibility equals view dot gone. So what this is saying is that when we uh, correctly load some data, go ahead and set our empty text to gone because we don't need it anymore because we have data. So now that we've updated that visibility, let's run this app and see how this looks. So here we are. We nicely see our, our empty screen. So let's go ahead and enter a zip code now to properly load some data. I hit submit and we see that our empty text is now gone. However, we don't see our weather data. What's the problem here? Well, back in Android Studio, if we go to our layout again, remember that we updated the visibility of the location name and the temperature text to be gone by default. We can see that here in the attributes panel. We can also see it if we were to come into the code, we can see the visibility set here to gone for the location name and gone for the temp text. So what this means is that inside of our current weather observer, at the same time that we tell the empty text to be gone, we need to tell the location name and the temperature text views to be visible. So I can do that by hitting enter and typing location name dot visibility equals view dot visible. And similarly, temp text dot visibility equals view dot visible. So now when I run this, now we see that we have that weather data displaying as expected. And if we switch over, we'll see that we see the, the empty text for a brief moment, and then we see the loaded temperature data. So this is a, a very basic example of how we could add this type of uh, empty text to our, our layout. Now this type of pattern is a is a good practice and there's lots of different ways you could go about doing this this might not necessarily be the most ideal because it leads to kind of a quick flash in the ui um, however there are ways we could get around that in the future if we were doing a more advanced course here but the main point here is to think about what do your users see the first time they view your app are they presented with an empty screen or do they see some type of useful message that gives them a hint as to what they should be doing. Now that we've added an empty state, the next thing that we want to add is some type of progress indicator to indicate to the user that some type of background work is being done. This is really useful when performing long running network operations or database access or any other type of long task where the user is waiting on some type of response by adding a progress indicator, it gives them some indication of what's happening. If they, if they click a button or they enter some text and nothing changes in the UI, they have no idea of knowing if the app is doing something, if they have messed up somehow, it's a very confusing thing for the user. So a progress indicator is a great way to help give them feedback and help them understand that the app is actually working and uh, working for them. So, Similarly, for the empty state, we're going to start by going into our layout XML file. And I'm going to go to the design view. And over here in the palette where we previously got our text view, we're going to come to the widgets section. And we're going to look for a progress bar. Now you can see there's kind of two styles here. There's a progress bar that's circular. And then there's a progress bar that is more horizontal. Um, both of these have their places within uh, within Android development. Um, horizontal progress bar can be used for an 
indeterminate amount of time um, or for a determinant amount of time. Um, and actually, really, really either progress bar can be indeterminate or determinant. And all this means is indeterminate means I'm just going to load and load until something is done. Determinant means I roughly know how much work I need to do and I'm going to give regular updates. And so that might be some type of status bar that goes one, two, three, uh, all the way up to 100% done. Now, in our case, we're going to use a circular progress bar and we're going to use it in just the default indeterminate state. So it's just going to spin until the data is loaded. So I'm going to select that and drag that over into my UI. And I'm going to place this uh, below our empty text here. So I'm going to align the left to the left of the empty text. I'm going to align the right of the progress bar to the right of the empty text. And then I'm going to constrain the top of the progress bar to the top of that empty text. Then I'm going to click on the progress bar, come over to the attribute panel, and the default ID of progress bar, I'm actually okay with that, so I'm just going to leave that as progress bar for now. And now for visibility, I want to make this gone by default because we don't want to start out showing progress. We only want to show progress once we've actually started loading data. However, for tools sake, so that we can see what this layout might look like, I'm going to set the tools visibility to be visible. So if I run this to my emulator, we'll just double check that it's not showing by default. Perfect. We saw the empty text, we see the loaded state, but we didn't see the progress bar. That's exactly what we're looking for at the moment. So we'll go back over to Android Studio. Now I'm gonna go into my current forecast fragment and we need to get a reference to our new progress bar. So I'll type val progress bar equals view dot find view by ID. This time I'll type in progress bar within the angle brackets to specify the type. It's going to prompt me to import, so I'm going to hit Alt, Enter, and if I scroll up to the top, that should have imported this android.widget.progressbar import. And then now down here, I'll finish my find view by ID call by passing in r.id.progressbar. So, when do we want to show this progress bar? Well, we want to show the progress bar after we've gotten an updated location and we're going to then make the call to load current forecast. So let's update our location observer here. So in uh, on the line that says is location.zip code, after the arrow, I'm going to copy this line of code that says forecast repository .load forecast. I'm going to delete it temporarily, and then I'm going to add in open and close curly braces, and then paste that load current forecast line back in. So all this is doing is changing this from a one line expression to a multi line expression. And we're doing this because we want to do multiple things now in response to getting a new zip code location. And the added line that we want to add is saying progress bar dot visibility equals view dot visible. And now back up in our current weather observer, when we get an updated weather object, we want to say progress bar dot visibility equals view dot gone, because those two things really represent the life cycle of the loading operation. When we call the load current forecast uh, method that is starting this load operation. And for as long as it takes for that to finish, we're in the loading state. And when we get the new weather, we're now no longer in the loading state. And so we set the progress bar to gone. So now if I run this one more time and I switch back over to my emulator, we'll see that uh, we didn't see the progress bar there. However, if we jump over, it's very, very brief. It's the data is really it's loading so fast that we're not seeing the progress bar 
very much. However, the fact that we saw it at all shows that we are uh, we're on the right track. So now what, what we want to do is basically apply these same things for our weekly forecast fragment. And the reason we want to do it for the weekly fragment is because uh, this data takes a little bit longer to load, and it'll give us a better sense of what these new empty and loading states look like in our app. So we'll come back over into Android Studio, and then we're going to uh, open up weekly forecast fragment, and then click to open up fragmentweeklyforecast.xml. And so just to remind ourselves what this looks like, we have this uh, recycler view, and then we have our location entry button. And now what we really want to do here is add the same empty text view and the same empty progress bar from current forecast fragment and use it here in weekly forecast fragment. So to make this pretty easy on ourselves, we can open up fragment current forecast.xml. And then I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to copy the text view and the progress bar that we used in current forecast fragment. I'm going to open up the XML for weekly forecast fragment, which is fragment weekly forecast.xml. I'm going to switch over to the code view. And then here, kind of right below the root level constraint layout and before the recycler view, I'm going to paste in that text view and that progress bar. And if I then switch over to the design view, we can now see that we have that empty text and that progress bar within this layout. Now, if I come into the XML and I look at the empty text, this message isn't quite right here because on this screen, we're viewing the weekly forecast. So instead of saying enter zip code to see current weather, I'm going to say enter zip code to see weekly forecast. So now I'm going to close out of the XML files. Now, if we go to current forecast fragment, we need to get references to the same views in weekly forecast fragment. So again, I'm going to do a copy for the new empty text and progress bar properties. I'm going to open up my weekly forecast fragment. And then at the top of on create, right after we call inflator dot inflate, I'm going to paste in these new uh, empty text and progress bar properties. And then very similarly to what we did in the current forecast fragment, I'm going to update the empty text and progress bar visibility in our forecast observer. So within weekly forecast fragment here, we want to find our weekly forecast observer. And then above the line where we call submit list and update our recycler view, I'm going to paste in these new lines. So when we get an updated forecast, we are going to hide the empty text and hide the progress bar. And then similarly, in the saved location observer, we want to make the same update to show the progress bar when we start calling load weekly forecast. So I'll add progress bar dot visibility equals view dot visible. So now that we've generally copied the same pattern that we're using in current forecast fragment, let's redeploy this to our emulator one more time. And now if I go to the week tab, we'll see there much more clearly that we saw the empty text with a loading screen, and then it updated to show our data. Now let's take a step back and walk through this full experience again. So I'm going to uninstall my app from the emulator. I'll jump back over to Android Studio, click Redeploy. Now I'm back here in my app, and this is the first time user experience again. This is what we've been trying to improve. So now when the user installs the app for the first time, on the Today tab, they see this message, enter zip code to see current weather. 
If they switch to the Week tab, they see Enter Zip Code to see Weekly Forecast. And then if we go ahead and enter in a zip code and click Submit, we then see a progress indicator, and then finally the data loads. And we can notice that on either screen as we go between tabs. So this is a nice step towards improving that first time user experience on both of our main tabs here in our home screen. And this is a really good idea, like I've said. You want that first screen in your app to, uh, to not be empty and to give some guidance to users for how they should expect to use your application. Now that we've seen how to start adapting our UI to account for different logical states within our app, specifically an empty state and a loading state, I want to give you a brief overview of how you can start adapting to different types of screen sizes and configurations. As we've talked about in previous lectures in this course, Android devices come in a large variety of form factors. We have small phones, uh, large phones, we have tablets, we have Chromebooks. All of these devices can be in portrait orientation or horizontal orientation. Um, and if you start getting really advanced into Android development, you might start having to account for multiple windows or folding devices even. Now, thankfully, the, the Android resource system provides an, a really nice way of providing alternative resources for different form factors. So we can do things like provide an alternative layout for a horizontal uh, phone, something that's in landscape mode, versus more of a vertical or portrait orientation. We can provide alternative layouts or alternative styles or dimensions for a tablet versus a small phone. All of these things can be leveraged to build user interfaces and user experiences that adapt really well to the specific device that your user is using at the time. So what we want to do here is update our current forecast fragment to look a little bit better on a large screen device, specifically a tablet. Now to help us uh, visualize what this looks like, we first need to create a new emulator. And if you have a, uh, a computer with limited memory, you might want to close out any existing emulators that you already have open before creating and starting this new one. So as we've done before, to start a new emulator, I want to use the Android uh, device manager. So if I look at the upper right side of the toolbar in my Android Studio, there should be a little device icon with an Android over it. And if I hover over that, I see AVD manager. So I'm going to click that and it's going to bring up this Android virtual device manager. So I'm going to create the, or I'm going to click the create virtual device button. And then over on the left hand side, under the category, I'm going to select tablet. And then there's a few different types of tablets that we could select from here. Um, I'm just going to go with the, the first one chosen here, which is the pixel C tablet. I'm going to click next. It's going to ask what system image I want to use. Um, there's no need to download a new one here. I'm going to use uh, Q, which is the one that's already defaulted here that I already have download. I'm going to click Next. And then I'll just click Finish here to finish the creation of this new tablet emulator. So now I'm going to go ahead and run that emulator. So here we have the new Pixel C uh, emulator on my device. And we'll see by default it is set here into uh, landscape orientation. If I rotate the device by clicking the rotate icon in the emulator toolbar, we'll see that it will then uh, rotate so that it's now in uh, portrait mode. And if I scroll down from the settings, we'll see that auto rotate is off by default. Um, if you go ahead and click auto rotate on, then we'll see as we rotate this emulator, the, the UI is going to rotate to adjust it. So I'm going to leave it here with auto rotate on um, in uh, landscape orientation. And now I'm going to go to Android Studio and then I'm just going to deploy my app to this new device. Um, and I'm going to want to make sure that I have the right emulator selected. So I'm going to click the drop down here next to the play button. And I'm just going to make sure that I select my emulator. So for me, that is Pixel C API 29. 
Once I've selected that, I'll go ahead and click the Run App button. And now we'll see that our app has been deployed to the new emulator. And because of the work we did previously, our empty state here is looking pretty good. And if we go over to the other tab, it looks pretty good there as well. And just for completeness, we could rotate this once more. And we'll see that in uh, portrait mode, we're also looking good. So now let's see what happens when we actually load some data. We'll enter in a valid zip code here. We'll click submit. And now we see that we, we have our data. And if we rotate that, we'll see again in portrait mode, it also has data. Um, however, this doesn't really look very good. On a tablet, having the data presented in the upper left side of the screen really just leaves us with a ton of empty space here in our layout. It's not visually appealing. Um, the text isn't as large as it could be to take advantage of the space. So we're going to work on improving this by providing a custom layout for a large screen device so that on phones, we'll still display the data in the upper left corner of the screen. But on tablets, we're going to present much larger text and we're going to center it in the screen so it just takes up um, more of the real estate we have to work with. So let's switch back over to Android Studio. And what we want to do here is open up your current forecast fragment. And then specifically, we want to open up the layout for current forecast fragment. So that is fragment current forecast dot XML. And now if you come over to the left side of the screen here in the project folder, you'll see that fragment current forecast is within uh, the res slash layout directory. This is the default directory for layouts. Now, how do we go about creating an alternative layout for large screen devices? Well, what we can do is create an alternative layout directory specifically for devices who have a smallest screen width of at least 600 DP. And if that sounds a little bit confusing, don't worry, we're going to walk through that right now. So again, in the project window, or it would look the same if you're in the Android window, we're going to click on the res directory here. Going to right click on that, go to new, and then I'm going to select Android resource directory. Once I've clicked Android resource directory, it's going to ask me what type of directory I want to create. If we look at the drop down here, we could see we could create a directory for layout files, for, for menus, for navigation files, for transitions, values, etc. So we're going to select layout and you see by default, it uses layout as the name. Now this list here, this is the interesting thing, available qualifiers. If we scroll through this list, you'll see things like locale, layout direction, screen height, smallest screen width, ratio, orientation, um, keyboard, touchscreen. These are all qualifiers that we can use to provide custom resources. So whether that is a layout, a string resource, a dimension resource, a color, we can customize those based on all these different qualifiers. And the way to use this pane is to highlight the qualifier that you want to use. So for us, I want to use smallest screen width. And by using smallest screen width, again, that lets us say, use this alternative layout for any device whose smallest screen width is at least some specified value. So with your qualifier selected, you can then click this little arrow here and it will then highlight the, the right hand side of this. So for me, I chose smallest screen width. And so now it's asking me, what is the smallest screen width that I want to use here? So I'm going to type 600. So you see, the combination of smallest screen width, which is in the little middle panel here, with the value of 600, it's now updated our directory name up at the top. So now our directory name is layout-sw for smallest screen width, 600 dp, which accounts for the 600 screen width that we just specified. So I go ahead and hit OK. We'll now look at our resource directory, and we can see 
that we now have this new layout-sw600 uh, directory. So now any layouts we put in here will be used for devices that match the criteria of a smallest screen width of 600 dp. And so to just quickly test this, what we're going to do is click on Fragment, Current Forecast. I'm going to right click and select Copy. I'm going to right click on Layout-SW600DP. And I'm going to click Paste. And I'm just going to hit OK to copy that layout file into the uh, new layout directory. And so now what we want to do is we want to update how our location name and temp text are displayed in this layout on large devices. So what I want to do is uh, make this more centered. So I'm going to start by adjusting the horizontal bias. So again, I've selected location name here. In the attribute panel on the right hand side, I'm going to grab the slider for horizontal bias, which is currently set at zero. And I'm going to drag that over to 50 so that it's in the middle of the screen. And then I'm going to add a bottom constraint so that it is constrained to the bottom of the screen here. Now, as soon as I do that, it has now updated the text here so that it is sitting more in the middle of the screen. Now, the next thing that I want to do here, I want to select the uh, temperature and I want to center that with the text or with the, with the location name text. So instead of aligning this to the parent, I'm going to align the right hand side of this to the right side of the location name. And then again, I'm going to adjust the horizontal bias on this to be right in the middle at 50% so that it is centered with that text. And now I want to make the, the text of this a little bit bigger itself. So instead of a location two, I'm going to select maybe a display three, or maybe even a display four for the text appearance. And then I'm going to select the temperature text and I'm going to just select maybe a display one, or even if we wanted to go really big, we could select a display two here. So that's just making that text look a lot bigger. It's going to take more advantage of our screen space. And now just one last adjustment I made, um, you know, similarly to how the the empty text isn't quite centered it's actually at like the upper third i want to do the same thing for this text so i'm going to select the location name text view again go to the attributes panel i'm going to grab the vertical bias slider and i'm just going to slide that up again until it gets to 33 so that it just sits kind of in that upper third um, which again uh, just as far as design goes, I think generally it looks um, a little bit more balanced that way, kind of follows the rule of thirds in design. So let's test this out. Let's deploy this now to our emulator. So now with this new update, we see that this looks a whole lot better on our tablet. This feels like it's taking more advantage of the screen that we have on this large device. It feels like it wasn't an afterthought. It feels like we purposely designed it for this screen. And if we rotate that again in the, in the horizontal mode here, it's looking pretty good as well. Now there's a lot more that you could do with this type of uh, resource qualification. We could have special layouts for, for landscape. We could customize our list. Um, there, there's a whole lot you could do. However, for this week, we're just going to keep it really simple and introduce you to this concept of uh, qualifiers um, and keep it specific to current forecast fragment here.